Hello, we're going to look today at the use of the Park Disaster Response Curve to compare the response of hazard events comprising areas at different stages of development. We'll focus upon the Haiti earthquake versus the Christchurch earthquake of 2011. It's notable that the 2011 Christchurch earthquake followed another earthquake which occurred nearby about six months earlier, and that is often referred to as the Canterbury earthquake of 2010. Oh, that's a nice graph. That must be the Park Disaster Response Curve. Tell me about that. OK, so on the y-axis, we have well-being or quality of life. And on the x-axis, uh, we have time. So we have a pre-disaster phase, which is this section before the dotted blue line, where normality exists, the country or the city carries on as normal um, regarding the well-being and quality of life. So this line can be drawn and there's no change. Now, what happens is we hit this blue dotted line, and this is the point at which the earthquake strikes. Um, this is where the um, well-being will start to fall off. We reach what we call the, the relief phase. So we can start to continue the line, and the line comes down here. Uh, this is where we have search and rescue. Um, it could be in the hours or days after the event. And then we reach rehabilitation, where we have temporary housing. Some aid perhaps starts to arrive, and we end up with the line flattening off. That's in the days to weeks afterwards. And then reconstruction happens rebuilding of society and that's in the weeks to years afterwards so the idea being we have this curve that starts to be created haiti is a low-income country whereas new zealand is a high-income country this is a key factor which influences the response and recovery of these two otherwise somewhat comparable earthquakes so let's start with haiti on january the 12th 2010 a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck just 16 miles from port-au-prince the capital and here's what we need to know Haiti was, and it still is, one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. It's got weak infrastructure and unregulated building codes. This means the buildings collapsed like a house of cards. Over 230,000 people lost their lives and 1.5 million were left homeless. OK, so here's Haiti's disaster response curve. We have the pre-disaster where clearly the... I draw it on there. Clearly, there's a pretty low baseline. Living conditions weren't very great to begin with. But then we reach the relief and the recovery phase once the earthquake starts to happen. So earthquakes here, and then the relief and recovery. So there's a huge drop-off in quality of living standards. Um, the government was overwhelmed, international aid flooded in. But even then, aid was delayed and poorly distributed. And then the recovery we start to move it this, kind of this way along the graph, was slow and uneven. Even four years later and beyond that, only half the rubble had been cleared and many people were still in, in temporary shelters. For Haiti, the recovery didn't just mean rebuilding, it meant surviving if they could. So therefore, the, the, grind, the line goes like this and actually doesn't ever reach up to normality, up to the standards from previously. Now let's head to New Zealand. On February the 22nd, 2011, Christchurch was rocked by a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. While this was technically weaker than Haiti's, it caused immense damage. It struck directly under the city centre. Here's the difference though. New Zealand is a high income country with strict building regulations. Only 185 lives were lost. This was clearly very tragic, but much lower than Haiti. The government and emergency services responded very quickly. International aid played a smaller role because New Zealand had the resources to handle this problem itself. So Christchurch's disaster response curve looks very different. Again, we can draw on normality. And pre-disaster, clearly they had a high baseline. Life was good and infrastructure very strong. And then the dip. The earthquake strikes and there is a drop off. But thanks to prepared emergency plans, help arrived quickly. And then the recovery, we do like draw like this. And we can say, well, within a year, most infrastructure was repaired. And by 2015, the city was well on its way back to improvement. Recovery beyond the baseline level is often referred to as building back better or the three B's. And that's this section here. Building back better. This is more possible in high income countries. In New Zealand, this can be exemplified by SCIRT, S-C-I-R-T, SCIRT. This is Stronger Christchurch Infrastructure Rebuild Team, and this coordinated the rebuild of over 700 projects. So what we can then do is compare directly the two curves. So we can draw Haiti's curve, 
where we have normality along here, the steep drop off, and it looks like this and goes off into the distance. Haiti is green there. Um, we can then compare that to, let's draw Christchurch, where we have the same line along here, and then we go down, and that is our build back better. There we go. So why is it that these lines are so different? Why is Christchurch is so much shallower with a faster recovery? This essentially boils down to development. We've got economic resources. New Zealand can fund recovery, while Haiti relied on foreign aid. There's, all, there's also infrastructure. Christchurch's buildings were designed to withstand earthquakes, whilst Haiti's weren't. And then governance. A stable government helped Christchurch coordinate its response, while Haiti's struggled. So what's the takeaway for us as geographers? The park disaster response curve isn't just a graph. It's a reminder of how development affects resilience. More developed countries recover faster and less developed countries suffer longer lasting impacts. If we want exam success, we try and link the theory, in this case the park disaster response curve, to real world examples like Haiti and Christchurch. This will show off our analytical skills and impresses the examiner.